Hello everyone, now let us discuss about mock questions from Anatomy of Digestive System Part 1. In the current session, we will be discussing the questions from Basics of Gastrointestinal Tract. Coming to the first question, what is the other name for the gastrointestinal tract? Gastrointestinal tract is also called as elementary canal. Elementary indicates nourishment. Elementary canal is a continuous tube that extends from mouth to anus. One important point is mouth to anus is a part of elementary canal. Sometimes mouth is not also not a part. It is indicated with the red color here if you see. From mouth to anus it is a tube that extends from mouth to anus. Except liver, gallbladder and pancreas. That is the elementary canal. A tube that extends from mouth to anus except liver, gallbladder and pancreas. Even mouth is not a, considered as a part of elementary canal because it has teeth and tongue, sublingual glands which is a type of salivary gland, parotid gland and submandibular glands. Simply remember the red color ones are not a part of elementary canal. It is indicated in some books. They are indicated in the red color. Elementary canal is a tube, continuous tube that extends from mouth to anus. Though it is a tube that extends from mouth to anus, even mouth is not a part of elementary canal. That is the reason why it is indicated with red. They are considered as accessory digestive organs, not the organs of the GI tract. The organs of the GI tract are Pharynx, mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine. The accessory digestive organs are teeth, tongue, salivary gland, liver, gallbladder and pancreas and they are indicated by red color. Coming to next question, the wall of the GI tract from lower esophagus to anal canal has how many layers? Simply, what are the layers of the GI tract? There are four layers for GI tract. The four layers of the GI tract from deep to superficial are mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and sclerosa. Mucosa is the deepest layer. If you see, this is mucosa. Mucosa. Next, submucosa, the grey colour one. Next, muscularis, this one. And finally, serosa. So, there are four layers of the GI tract. From deep to superficial, they are mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and sclerosa. Which is the largest serous membrane of the body? The next question is, which is the largest serous membrane of the body? Peritoneum. Peritoneum is the largest serous membrane of the body. Peri means around. The peritoneum is the largest serous membrane of the body and it is divided into two layers. Parietal peritoneum which lines the walls of the abdominal cavity and visceral peritoneum which covers some of the organs of the, in the cavity and their sclerosum. If you see here, this is the parietal peritoneum and inner layer. This one is the visceral peritoneum. And they enclose peritoneal cavity which is filled with peritoneal fluid. So, which is the largest serous membrane of the body? It is the peritoneum. Coming to next question, which organ is not considered as retroperitoneal? We know that peritoneum is the serous membrane that encloses the abdominal cavity. And which organ is not considered as retroperitoneum? Retro means behind. Which organ is not considered as retroperitoneum? The answer is liver. Because kidneys, ascending and descending colon of the large intestine, duodenum of the small intestine and pancreas are said to be retroperitoneal organs. Retro means behind. behind, behind the peritoneum. This is important. Kidneys, ascending and descending colon of the large intestine, duodenum of the small intestine and pancreas are said to be retroperitoneal. Which organ is not considered? Liver is not considered as retroperitoneal because it is the only organ in the digestive system which attaches to the 
post anterior abdominal wall liver attaches to the anterior abdominal wall that is the only organ in the digestive system which attaches to the anterior abdominal wall what is peritonitis itis means inflammation peritonitis is the inflammation of peritoneum what is ascites build up of fluid in the peritoneum due to liver, liver failure excessive peritoneal fluid the build up of fluid in the peritoneum due to liver failure is called as ascites next coming to the folds the peritoneum has how many folds we know that peritoneum is two layered visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum in addition to that the peritoneum has folds so there are mainly five folds of peritoneum peritoneum mainly has five folds what are they greater omentum falciform ligament lesser omentum mesentery and mesocolon mesocolon is not a part of colon it is a fold of peritoneum remember peritoneum has five folds they are greater greater omentum falciform ligament lesser omentum mesentery and mesocolon which fold of the peritoneum binds the jejunum and ileum of the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall which fold of the peritoneum binds the jejunum and ileum of the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall it is the mesentery here you can see this is the peritoneal fold mesentery this binds jejunum this is jejunum and this is ileum jejunum and ileum of the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall mesentery is the fold of peritoneum that binds the jejunum and ileum of small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall next question which fold of the peritoneum attaches liver to the anterior abdominal wall and diaphragm we have previously discussed that liver is the only digestive organ that is attached to the anterior abdominal wall now which fold of the peritoneum attaches liver to the anterior abdominal wall and diaphragm here you can see this is liver and this is the falciform ligament falciform ligament is the fold of the peritoneum that attaches liver to the anterior abdominal wall and diaphragm so which fold of the peritoneum attaches liver to the anterior abdominal wall and diaphragm it is falciform ligament thank you for watching please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and cpc training